y'all. What's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and we're back on the grind. Today, I want to talk to you about a pretty cool subject, what it's really like to own an electrical company. And this could really go for any company. Depending on what industry you're in, it's going to vary on times of days and different things like this. An electrical company is in the emergency business, okay? So it has a little bit of different aspects. I'm going to walk you some of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and really just what it's like to own a company. Now, this is going to vary based on how many employees you have. If you've got 25 employees, it's going to be probably 5x what I'm getting ready to talk about. Today, we're going to make an imaginary company that has five employees for an electrical company. And I'm going to walk you through kind of a typical day, some of the good, some of the bad, some of the highs, some of the lows. We're just going to talk about a 24-hour day and what you have to deal with. If you're just catching us in this series, we've been talking about businesses and starting companies and what it's really like to have one. Uh, the last couple days, I've dropped the five reasons you should open an electrical company, and I've dropped the five reasons you shouldn't. You should go back and watch those videos and check them out. So today, let's talk about what it's really like to own an electrical company. All right, so let's get right to it. We're just going to take through a 24-hour period of what it's like to own your own electrical company. We're going to make this imaginary company that owns that has five employees and has a pretty successful little business. So let's talk about 4 to 7 a.m. So if you have employees of any type, you're likely going to be waking up in between 4 and 7 a.m. Because you have to get ahead of the game. You have to get ahead of your customers, and you have to get ahead of your employees. So let's talk about the 4 to 7 o'clock hour. You're going to wake up, and immediately there's at least going to be one text or missed call from a customer and one text or missed call from one of your employees. Likely one of them is sick or something's going on or the dog went missing, but don't worry, he'll be back because this happens every third week. Or it's tax return season and somebody's got the tax return flu. So with that being said, one of those are going to happen. You just kind of get used to it or you got a customer that forgot that you were going to be there today and they can't make it and they leave a seven minute voicemail. And these are all good things and there's nothing wrong with it, but that's kind of what you face. As soon as you wake up, email, text, call, something, almost every day with five employees. Now, if you have a little bit less, it might not be as often. If you have more, it's going to be five or six, uh, you know, calls, texts, different things. So four to 7 a.m., you're waking up, you're getting rolling. You should already know or be, you know, you know, executing where everyone's going. So you have five people. So the moment they get on the job, at, we're going to say seven or eight a.m., they need to have something to do. They have, need to have material to do it. You're constantly thinking and getting these things moving. I love that part of the game. I love getting up, hitting the floor, running, answering calls, getting going, you know, moving and, you know, getting things moving. So there's there's nothing wrong with this part of the day. It's just not your own anymore. You know, when you work for somebody else, hey, you can wake up, use the bathroom, you flick on uh, Good Morning America or whatever you watch. Um, you know, whatever. Long story short, you flick on the weather channel, you eat a bowl of cereal. Oh, wait, I'm going to call grandma. You talk to grandma for 30 minutes. Well, we know in your own business, that's not really the case. You're usually dealing with business from the moment you wake up. All right, so let's talk about the 8 to 11 a.m. hour. So you're making sure that everyone's where they need to be with five employees. Typically, you're not wearing tools as much anymore, okay? You're more of a manager and you're making sure everybody has their parts and dealing with all the, you know, the customer service in. You, you may still wear your tools from time to time. Let's imagine some Somebody called in so and somebody has to be to that job at eight o'clock it doesn't matter if you feel like it or your employee feels like it or the dog's gone missing somebody has to be there okay if not you're spending more time trying to explain why somebody's not going to be on this contractor's job or this homeowner's job then you are just going out there yourself and doing it so you get the other people going then you head out to this job because somebody called in sick. So you're wearing tools, you're answering phone calls, you got two other crews on two other jobs, next thing you know they need a part or something goes wrong or the inspector showed up early. So these are just some of the ins and outs. I'm not talking to you about it. This is just what really happens on a day-to-day -day basis. But then you get completed a job at 9 o'clock. The customer loves it. Everything's awesome. They stroke you a big old fat check you've been waiting on. And you get to head over to the bank while you go to head and catch up with the other, you know, one of the other crews. So you head out to the bank, you do your run-in, you stop and get your little lunch. That's one of my favorite parts of the day. Being an owner, you can break off a lot of times, sit down, have your lunch while you're answering phone calls and emails. I love that part of the game. That's fun. So you go get you some parts, you head on over to the, you know, the next job. You make sure your employees are continuing moving. It's okay, Bill. I got my dog out here with me. She's in the, the studio with us. So from 11 to 3 is more of just the same stuff. You're basically getting parts. You're hunting down men. Somebody calls. Somebody poked a hole through somebody's dishwasher. Fill in the blank here. doesn't really matter. You're going to have some highs. You're going to have some lows. But at the end of the day, you're going to get things done. By 3 o'clock, you guys are starting to wrap up. But then you get an emergency call. It's an emergency, and it's on a job that you were on. 
could be your fault, could be somebody else's fault. You were on the job three weeks ago, so you take off that way. You were on your way home, you thought you were going to get to go to the ball game, but you're on your way out to check out this job. So you head out there from 3 to 7 p.m., you're dealing with things, you're dealing with phone calls for the day, you're starting to already line up work for tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So you're getting material for those, you're getting permits for those, you're on the phone. Mm-hmm. On a normal day with five employees, if you have a, you know, a good working business, you are going to have anywhere from 20 to 60 phone calls, okay? You're going to be on the phone no less than three hours during that day if you total it all up. Dealing with customers, dealing with permit offices, dealing with material offices. It's okay, Bella. Oh, she's got something. Something's got her tore up. You're going to be dealing with all these different things. So with that being said, you're just more being on the phone, getting things, getting material. You know, hopefully you make it home for dinner. I make it a priority to make it home for dinner. Bella, you got to calm down. We're recording, honey, okay? So hopefully you make it home for dinner. You get to have your dinner, but then you head into the 7 and 11 o'clock hour. Now, this could be the witching hour, depending on how many emergency calls you do and different things like that. You might get a call out. You might get a call from a customer. You might get a call from somebody's house you were at. You forgot to turn the breaker back on. But you might get a call saying, hey, this looks gorgeous. My wife just got home. I just got home from work. You finished the job at our house today. It really looks amazing. Um, just thank you for what you do. Or, or you just get a you know an email from Google you know, and somebody left a good review. So there's ups and downs. There's highs and lows. We're not going to get into all that today. I just want to talk about what we do. So around 10, 11 o'clock, you're winding down for the day. You may, you may still be getting phone calls, texts, people um, getting it. It's okay, honey. There's nobody. There's nobody there. Yeah. She's my bodyguard. She thinks she is. Anyways, till the refrigerator starts beeping, right? Our refrigerator, if you leave the door open, it starts beeping and she'll go hide like somebody's you know, it's like somebody's trying to attack us, so I have, we have to let her know it's all right. But anyways, long story short, from 7 to 11, you're answering phone calls. It's, I don't know, 7 or 8 o'clock at night right now. I'm out here shooting videos, but I have different, you know, multiple different things that I do, but you might be estimating, you might be getting materials, you might be sending out invoices. So from 7 to 11, you're still working, um, and if you start counting the hours in a day, and then you get into the 11 o'clock hour, you start to wind things down. Typically, people don't call anymore unless it's a true emergency, and you'll start not having calls, but you might get text somebody will just you know get an idea oh can we do that in white instead of in ivory when it could have waited till in the morning but you just roll over and you type why or you don't answer them despite it and not in a bad way but it's like there's a certain amount of time that i run my business stop texting me at 11 15 about white receptacles does that make sense all right let's go into the seven uh, 7 to 11 p.m we just did that one let's go into 11 to 4 a.m so hopefully you're getting some sleep right now Hopefully you're resting. Hopefully you are, you know, uh, just being able to decompose, I call it, decompress a little bit. Hopefully you're not getting texts and emails. It doesn't mean that you're not going to. And you're going to get recharged for the next day. So I love everything I described to you. I love the ups and downs. Uh, entrepreneurship and running your own business is literally like a roller coaster. You can be at someone's house one minute and they're screaming at you during an estimate. And then two hours later, you're at somebody's house and they're baking you fresh muffins and they give you a $50 bonus. I'm not kidding. It's literally that extreme. Some of you guys who already own, co- already own your own companies, you can drop some stuff in the comments below. So I like doing this. If this doesn't sound like something that you like doing, may not be what you want to do. Okay, so it's a full time grind. You can count the hours that I work every day and everyone on here who already owns their own business can vouch that from around 4 a.m. to around 11 p.m. They're working every single day, taking calls, doing things. If you enjoy being off at five and really being off may not be something that you want to do is run your own business. If you enjoy contacting with people and working and building something you know, that is going to be yours and ultimately you benefit from the most, it may be for you. So I've not sugarcoated it this week. I've given you the good and the bad. You can have extreme days in that 24 hours where it's nothing but nightmare. And you can have days where it's nothing but bliss, where everything just falls into place and the receptacles fall on the wall and the big check comes in that you've been waiting on. I'm telling you, it's like a roller coaster. So all I tell you is if you want to own your own business, buckle up because it's a roller coaster. Has the good, the bad, and the ugly. I personally love entrepreneurship. I was just born to be an entrepreneur. I can't help it. 
Occasionally, I'll get an opportunity uh, for different levels of experience or different levels of pay, and I'll go take jobs here and there and still be running my own thing and doing all my other different companies, but it's all about advancement. I don't care what you do. You could do one thing one month and one thing the next as long as you're happy and you're increasing. Always be increasing. Don't be going back unless it's a strategic move to you know be playing the longhand game. You might go somewhere temporary, late, make less money if they're going to, say, teach you solar Okay, and then you're going to be able to get into some solar and stuff. So super excited to be a part of your guys' journey. That you know, this may be a boring video to hear me talk about what somebody does in 24 hours. That's fine. I just want you to know kind of what we do. Um, I didn't take you with me and tag along. I've made videos of spending you know a day with me. That's cool. This is really what we do because when you shoot those a day with somebody videos, it's kind of all you know. They show you all the really cool stuff, but at the end of the day, that's kind of really what happens on any given day. And some of you who already own businesses, you can vouch for me down in the comments below and let them know that's a pretty typical day if you got five guys. It can be crazier and it can be better. But that's a pretty typical day. So I hope you guys have a great day. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I just want to see you win. If you need anything from me, you can just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm.